Most, if not all, of the physics that you've done up to this point in your career has been to analyze problems from the point of view of an observer in an inertial reference frame. In an inertial reference frame, Newton's second law applies, but it's important now for us to take a step back and ask what an inertial reference frame really is, because in this chapter, we want to try and analyze motion from the point of view of an observer in a non-inertial reference frame, because there's some fascinating physics that you can get from that. So, definitions. An inertial reference frame is one that is moving with constant velocity with respect to the primary inertial reference frame. And what is the primary inertial reference frame? And that is one that is either stationary with respect to, not moving, not rotating, and not translating, with respect to the fixed stars. So, if we have fixed stars out there, and for the moment let's forget about the fact that they're not really fixed, and let's just take their average positions, and, and then the inertial frame would be the frame of reference that is not moving with respect to the average position of these stars, nor is it rotating with respect to, the, uh, to these stars. So that's an inertial reference, uh, the primary inertial reference frame. And an inertial, that's one that's stationary with respect to the fixed stars. An inertial reference frame would be one that is moving with constant velocity. Moving with constant velocity with respect to this uh, primary inertial reference frame. So it's important to point out here that we're talking about velocity, not just speed. So it can't be rotating with respect to this primary inertial reference frame. It can be translating with respect to the primary inertial reference frame. can be moving as long as that movement is with a constant velocity. So that's what an inertial reference frame is. What uh, an example of an inertial reference frame is a, is a spacecraft out in deep space that's far away that's far away from any stars or galaxies. So it's not subject to any gravitational acceleration or any forces that would cause it to swerve uh, from its velocity. So it could either be stationary with respect to the fixed stars, or it could be moving at constant velocity with respect to the fixed, fixed stars, just drifting through space at a constant velocity. That's an inertial reference frame. Here on Earth, there are uh, plenty of frames that are close enough approximations to an inertial reference frame. Um, so this would be example one. Example two would be a car driving down a straight road so it's a car traveling at a constant velocity on a straight road. So that road could even be on an incline. So if this is the car, and it's moving with a constant velocity, and it's on an incline, and the road's not veering right or left, and it's not going, um, it's not going over a hill, but it's a nice constant slope, so that velocity will always be the same, pointing in the same direction, the speed's always the same. That would be another example of, of an inertial reference frame. So we can analyze motion from the point of view of an observer sitting in this car. Now, 
you might be saying, well, does that mean that in, in physics we can't talk about objects that are accelerating? And the answer is you've been doing this all your life already. We can analyze from the point of view, let's take the inertial reference frame of me standing here in my office, I'm standing right here. I can analyze the motion of objects that are accelerating. For example, this, if I drop it, it'll accelerate toward the floor. The object that I'm analyzing is, is accelerating. But my reference frame is not accelerating. That's the key. Now, as soon as I want to try and analyze the motion of this when I drop it, from its point of view, meaning I want to attach a reference frame to this um, cap, then I'm not in an inertial reference frame, and I have to be careful about what I do. So that's, um, that's inertial reference frames. They're not rotating, not translating with respect to fixed stars. A non-inertial reference frame is one that does accelerate by either linear or angular acceleration with respect to an inertial frame. So, um, Uh, example one would be a car on a straight road but that doesn't have a constant velocity. So this car is accelerating in a linear fashion right here on the straight road. This uh, reference frame X, Y, Z that's attached to this car would be a non-inertial reference frame. Even though, if I'm standing here on terra firma watching that accelerating car, um, I can analyze the motion of the, that car, and from my point of view, I would be in an inertial reference frame. And as it turns out, I can apply Newton's second law in this inertial reference frame in analyzing the motion of that car as I'm standing here on terra firma, and Newton's second law will apply. However, if I want to analyze the motion of the car or an object within the car from the point of view of a person who's in the car, then uh, Newton's second law does not apply. And one of the subjects, well, the main purpose of this chapter is to try and get a handle on uh, whether there are modifications to Newton's second law that will apply when observing motion within a non-inertial reference frame. The short answer is yes. We'll modify Newton's second law and find out what the extra terms look like in different frames. Now this isn't the case of translation, but in the case of um, angular acceleration, if we're rotating, for example, if you're um, going around a corner in your car, and this is the most concrete example, the velocity vector, even though you might be going at a constant speed, the direction of the velocity vector is changing. And that means that there's gonna be an acceleration toward the center of that circle because you're moving in, in this case, uniform circular motion. Is that an inertial reference frame? Well, if I'm standing here on terra firma watching what's happening, this, um, this is inertial, my inertial reference frame right here, but the reference frame of the driver sitting in the car is non-inertial. And um, he will experience forces, and in this case, um, you're a little bit familiar with one of the forces that you feel. As you're going around this corner, you feel a centrif it's called a centrifugal force. Um, it's a force that you feel that sort of pulls you out, away from the center of the circle. That's called a, an inertial force. So that's the third definition that we want to make here. An inertial force is an additional force experienced by an object in a non-inertial frame. So, for example, 
the centrifugal force. And that's experienced by you every time you're in your car and you turn the corner, uh, you experience the centrifugal force. Now, uh, these different names are given to these types of forces. Additional forces that are experienced in a non-inertial reference frame. They're sometimes called uh, fictitious forces. Um, They're sometimes called pseudo-forces. Some people don't even um, like to call them forces, but we will just call them inertial forces in this chapter. I think it's a great name. That's what Taylor uses in his book. Um, they are they're forces that result from analyzing things in... Um, in non-inertial reference frames. And so, the, the rest of this chapter, chapter 9, the first concept that we will do will be to analyze, to fi figure out what the uh, inertial forces are for an object that's accelerating, for an object in a non-inertial reference frame that's accelerating with linear acceleration, like in a train car, or in a car as you accelerate from rest. And then we will also study the forces resulting from being in a non-inertial reference frame that's rotating. And um, those forces for the rotating frame are going to be the uh, centrifugal force and something called the Coriolis force.